we're going to start Best Moments in 1979 Tops Football with uh, names that would have gotten you beat up as a kid. And there's a question about whether this would have motivated you to, in fact, become a big, tough football star. So first of all, we start out with John Stenerud. Jan, kind of a girl's name. Virgil Livers. Virgil? Livers? Joe Lavender. Whether it's a color, whether it's a pretty scent, you know, very calming, not super macho. Dave Beverly, right? His last name is a woman's name, not good. Cliff Parsley, Spice, an herb, I guess, more specifically, not good. Going to get you beaten up quite hard. But the winner of name that's going to get you beat up, June Jones. Do you know any other man in the history of the world named June? No, you do not. We've got a lot of competition for this next uh, category in best moments in Topps football. It's best accessory. We've got a couple of guys rocking uh, glasses. we got Bob Greasy. He's kind of got Diana Prince from Wonder Woman, you know, Linda Carter glasses going on. Doesn't quite do justice. Chuck Muncie and Billy White Shoes Johnson. They at least got something. You guess you could do it. Those are pretty good accessories. But we're going to look at some other ones. We're going to look at the headband. Pure, sweet, it's 1978 headbands. Gene from the Redskins, sweet. Greg Lotta from the Bears, also nice. But you know what? You can step it up a notch. Why don't you be like Lydell Mitchell with his color-coordinated headband matching his sweet Chargers uniform? Or, better yet, Ed Taylor. Matching headband, elbow band, and wristband, and the glasses. Cool glasses. You'd think he'd win, but no. What about Tony Reed? He took a friggin' bandana, he wrapped it up, curled it up, and wrapped it around his head. That is a great accessory. You'd think that would win, but no. The winner for best accessory, Joe D. Joe DeLamalier from the Buffalo Bills. He had a gaping head wound. And he just used some gauze and he wrapped it up and he went out there to play. And he just kept using it because it was a great look. He wins. Joe D. For best accessory. The next top moment is most tipsy. A little bit of a strange category. Not a lot of competition. We got Oliver Davis from the Browns. Kind of tipped over slightly, but not, not much. Otis Sistrunk is in the running, though his name is, you know, kind of rhymes with drunk. But otherwise he really doesn't belong in this category. So there's really, there's no competition. The clear winner, Benny Ricardo from the Detroit Lions. Very tipsy and the definite winner in this category. Next category is best receding hairline. These are guys in their prime of their life. They should have a full head of hair. Gary Shirk from the Giants. Having a little bit of an issue. Same thing with Mark. Reggie McKenzie, losing a little ground there on his forehead. Bill. Len Cadis from the Patriots. But the winner for best receding hairline has to go to Tom Whittem from the 49ers. His hair is growing more sideways than it is uh, from the top of his head. Congratulations, Tom. Next category is just flat out best name. Just nothing funny about this, just best name. Dewey Selman from the Buccaneers. Dewey Selman. Haskell Standback. Right? I mean, how cool is that? My name is Haskell Stanback. Nice to meet you. Marvin Cobb from the Bengals and his close friend Rufus Mays. Very cool names. Somebody getting points for alliteration, Reggie Rucker from the Browns. Now listen to this name. Wherever you are right now, let this one roll off your tongue. Conrad Dobler. Conrad Dobler. Say it. You'd think he'd win, hands down. But the judges actually were anon uh, uh, anonymous, unanimous. Coy Bacon. He's Bacon, and he's Coy. Coy Bacon. Winner of Flat Out Best Name. So this next one is, You are so cool that they print your nickname on the card. So that's the category. You are so cool, you get your nickname on the card itself. Are you Sam the Man Cunningham? No, you are not. Are you Thomas Henderson? Thomas Hollywood Henderson. You're not. You do get honorable mention. They at least put it on the back there, but come on. You're not that cool. You don't get it on the front. What about Steve Foxy Lady Bartkowski? 
I think actually I made that nickname up. I was listening to uh, Jimi Hendrix as I was going through these cards, so that, that may actually be a falsehood. But what about Roger the Dodger? No. The winner, the coolest guy, the only guy to get his nickname on the card, Ed Too Tall Jones. This next category is kind of obscure, and it goes to names that I thought were a heck of a lot funnier as a 10-year-old, and most of these are really related to a misunderstanding. So, for instance, Chris Hamburger. Not funny at all, but as a kid, I swore that his name was Chris Hamburger, and that is funny, but I was mistaken. How about Steve Furness? When you're 10 years old and you know how to spell, and you think his last name is a appliance, a large appliance that you have in your basement, that's kind of funny. But in fact, that is not his name. And the winner for this category of names that made me laugh as a kid for no good reason, Jim Marshmallow. Because I thought his name was Jim Marshmallow up until about a year and a half ago. It makes no sense. I have no explanation. So this next category is had only one person in the running. And it is for most soulful look. A rare category. Most players, they're not even looking at you. Here's Bill. He's looking off to the side. Coy won't make eye contact. Conrad, forget about it. Ed Too Tall Jones, no. But check this out. Danny Bugs. I mean, he's looking right into your soul. He's making you think about your life choices. So the clear and obvious winner of most soulful look, Danny Bugs. This is another one. A little bit esoteric, so just bear with me. This is... The largest investment bank that's too large to fail has to go to Stanley Morgan, of course. And I'd like you to introduce you to the CEO of Stanley Morgan, Tom Blanchard, right? He's got to be the CEO, if not the CFO. So the next best moment is for, please don't get a picture of me when I'm wiping my mouth, going to Mike Webster. And in a related category... Please, please don't get a picture of me when I'm about to hawk a loogie going to Ron Yeri from the Vikings. This next best moments is the names you loved most as a kid. Remember, you're 10 years old. You're immature. You're a boy. Enough said. Rod Perry? How about Billy Waddy? For some reason, the Rams have more than their fair share of good names. Willie Miller? And the super funny Mick Tinglehoff. But the clear winner of the category of best names you love to say as a kid, Booby Clark. Booby, thank you. Next category, best secret agent, Ken Stone. So this next category are names that we just don't have anymore, but we, but we really need them. We need them back. Like, don't we need a couple of Monty's? Wouldn't the world be a better place with Monty Jackson or Monty Johnson? And what happens if we had a president of the United States named Stu? Wouldn't we feel a lot safer? And a Herman, right? If your boss's name was Herman, would you go to bed feeling good about yourself? And another H name. For some reason, if it's not the, the, uh, the Hermans, you got Harold, right? Harold McClinton, Harold Jackson. But here's a name that you, you should name your son or your daughter. Chester. Chester Merkel, right? And yet another H name, Horace. Where are the Horaces? Tell me we wouldn't be better off with a Horace. But the winner in category of names you just don't see anymore, but you really wish you did. Dexter. Dexter Bussy. We need more Dexters. The next category is a little bit hard to understand, but it is, do they measure yards differently in Canada? And it goes to Zenon, Zenon Anderson from the Chiefs. <laughs> from the Chiefs? From the Chiefs. So check this out. So he's playing in the CFL, right? 43, 45, 45, 46 yard average, right? And suddenly he comes to the NFL playing with the Chiefs and it goes down to 41. So he drops like four or five yards, you know, 12 feet on each punt. So, I mean, what's going on there, right? I mean, something something funny. Putting helium in the balls in Canada, something like that. That's something ain't right there. So this next category is somebody's getting fired at tops. 
Maybe you weren't as dumb as my brothers and I who did not notice this fact until we were like in our middle ages. But all of the logos from the helmets were airbrushed until like the 90s. So, Giants, no logo. Seahawks, nothing. Rams, nope. Joe Theismann, his logo removed. Perhaps somebody was thinking ahead of time about the cultural insensitivity of their logo. But I mean, the Raiders, the Lions, God, even the Browns were airbrushed. But, what about Ron Jesse from the Rams? His logo in all of his full glory. You know, if it was only one player, should somebody get fired for that? Well, it's not just Ron. What about Charlie? What about Glenn? Fred? And Frank? So, mark my words. Somebody's getting fired at tops. And now we are on to our final best moment in Topps 1979 football cards. And this goes to most embarrassing record breaker. That's a journey if you're a record breaker. That's a moment to be proud. But imagine if the record that you're breaking is John James's most punts in a season for the Falcons. Because what is this record saying? It's saying your team so bad that you are not scoring touchdowns. You're not making field goals. You're not even advancing far enough to attempt a field goal. And so you are punting non-stop and then and you have a record for that so I mean this is just it's an, it's an embarrassing humiliating record so I'm sorry for John James and his record-breaking most punt season